Warning, it is not too late to turn back. The information in this report may be shocking, and once you become aware of what you are about to see, you cannot unsee it. The information in this report may change your perception of the world we live in today and what we can expect as we enter a new decade. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. To understand what is in store for this new decade, we need only look to the controllers who have shaped the last century. Let's begin with the central banks. The central banks have become obsessed with two objectives. As Zero Hedge points out, one of these objectives is climate change. The other is blockchain technology and the digitization of currency or assets. These two facts become apparent when you visit the websites and or social media accounts of the global financial institutions, whether it's the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, or the Bank for International Settlements. These global central banks are considered to be the central banks of central banks, the movers and shakers. In other words, each and every country which has its own central bank, the equivalent to the Federal Reserve in the United States or the European Central Bank in Europe, all report back to these institutions and none of them are government institutions. These are privately owned banks, which control their hosting nation's currency and their monetary policy. Carney clearly states that a new financial system is already under construction, and this new financial system is already funding initiatives and innovation in the private sector, implying a clear distinction or separation between the new financial system and the private sector. Blockchain technology and crypto assets. Many of the world's top central banks are currently developing their own CBDCs, which are central bank digital currencies, right now. And 2020 looks to be the beginning of the digital decade, transitioning away from paper fiat to digital assets. Now, many see this as an inevitability, as the current financial and monetary system is operating on pre-internet technology for the most part. So updating the system to today's technological capabilities seems like a no-brainer. Now, when you make a transaction at a store, on the consumer level, the payment is complete and you think nothing of it kind of like when you send money. But in reality, it takes days to process and settle these payments. There are all kinds of fees and a lot of money tied up in pre-funded accounts for financial institutions, and crypto assets can change all of this, and it has many other potential benefits. Now, many people within the crypto community may not like what I'm about to say, and that's okay. But I worry that many in the crypto community who are financially invested may be blinded by potential return on their investment and may turn a blind eye or overlook very real potential privacy concerns capital controls, and or restrictions as we see the world in the process of crypto adoption. Now, this transition into digital assets will accomplish several goals for the global financial elite. There are currently 1.7 billion people globally that do not have a bank account, but most of them do have cell phones. This is a huge percentage of the population that is an untapped market, which they plan to integrate into the system as we see here in this G7 report on stablecoins published by the Bank for International Settlements, which many argue would be a fantastic achievement and rest assured they will all be tracked, monitored, and taxed accordingly. Now the goal has long been a cashless society because cash offers a degree of anonymity. We can already see the internet of things in our homes. We're already witnessing the birth of smart cities all around us. And we are currently witnessing a global transition to blockchain technology where everything from produce to cars are currently being tracked on the blockchain. And it's only a matter of time before we, the people, are being tracked and monitored on the blockchain and blockchain becomes the cherry on top of the global surveillance state. Mark my words. I'm very well aware that we are not yet through this economic crisis, but you know we we have the uh, the chief of staff for President Obama was is an old friend of, of mine and my husband's and was in the White House when when Bill was there and and he said you know uh, never waste a good crisis and when it comes to the economic crisis don't waste it when it 
It can have a very positive impact. Hardships experienced personally by millions of Americans who no longer know how they'll pay their bills or make their mortgage or raise their families. From the day I took office, I knew that solving this crisis would not be easy, nor would it happen overnight. And we will continue to face difficult days in the months ahead. But I also believe that we will get through this, that if we act swiftly and boldly and responsibly, the United States of America will emerge stronger and more prosperous than it was before. That's why my administration is committed to doing all that's necessary to address this crisis and lead us to a better day. That's why we're moving forward with an economic agenda that will jumpstart job creation, restart lending, relieve responsible homeowners, and address the long-term economic challenges of our time, the cost of health care, our dependence on oil, and the state of our schools. You never want a serious crisis to go to waste. And what I mean by that, it's an opportunity to do things that you think you could not do before.